Hey, and welcome back to our second favorite place on Earth. We're really happy to be here, and we're glad that you came along too. My name is Chris. And I'm Kyle. And today, we're going to be looking more at how we have dug deep before. Yeah. Um, Chris, have, do you have any stories of something that you've dug deep for? I have I have a lot of stories of things that I do a lot of digging, um, okay. just kind of all around. I do digging, uh, I do digging here. Um, in this spot that we are in, uh, I do digging at home. Okay. I do digging. I think actually my favorite memory of digging though uh, has to be from my childhood when um, you know how your parents would give you treat bones. I would take all my treat bones and bury them in the yard, and then I'd be able to go dig them up later on, and uh, and then I just have you know hours and hours of fun with those treat bones. So um, hold on, hold on a second. Your parents gave you treat bones? Yeah, all the time. Like when I when I did something good, like when I, when I came back inside, or you know when I went to the bathroom and all of that. Like I, I just did did some good things, and so I would get treat bones uh, all the a okay. lot. All right, right. And, and they were just so and much then fun. you would go and bury them in the yard. Bury them in the yard, various places, a lot of treat bones, and then I go just dig them up later on when I wanted them because I would bury them. I would know where they were, and then I could come back and dig them up and have fun with them. So, uh, yeah. All right, all right, well, cool. Well, one of my favorite digging stories, really, I was at the beach one time, and I decided I was gonna dig a hole all the way to China. So I don't know if you know it's possible, but it is. It's so the cool thing about doing it at the beach is if you dig it deep enough, build a little trench, the water goes right down the hole, really cools down like the center of the earth. I don't know if you know this, but it's really hot. And it's really like a water slide all the way to China. You. So you were at, which beach was this? Was it, was it a local beach? Or were you in like a, in a, a different area of the, you were just- It like, was it was near the ocean. Can it, can it be? Because I needed a lot of water. Okay, for the water side to cool the earth's yes. core. Okay, yes. so, so you dug and then the water came in and then you rode a water slide down to China. All the way through, you pop out and you say, good day, mate, welcome. No, you, you, you so you, hmm. that was China that you were in. That was China, there were kangaroos, dingoes, some wallabies all over the place. I wallabies. That's that's an animal I have not heard of you in a while. Do you have to watch out for scorpions cuz they're everywhere. in China. You have to yes. watch out for the scorpions. Yes. Well, what else did you do besides see the wallabies? Well, it was really hot, so the water would just kind of like flow back and forth between, you know, where I was at the beach and then China. So I didn't really want to scare my parents, so I just took the water slide back. So. You took the water slide back. So it's a it's a it's a it two-way water slide. Yeah. You didn't have to dig another trench to reverse it. It just, it sloshes no, back No, it's forth. just the cool thing about gravity. It just works both ways, so. So the water's just sloshing back and forth and you just, it's, it's, you just flip it and you just go back. Like yeah. most water slides do, yeah. you just go right yeah, back. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, Chris, but down here is also down in China. So it's the same thing. It's like if you, I go down, it's like you went hole, down under. I'm gonna go all the, you got it. Okay. How, about how long? Approximately how long was the water slide ride? And was it quicker on the way back? It's about 15 about minutes. 15 minutes. What do you do on a water slide for that long? You just yell and scream and I mean, there were no cameras to take my picture or anything while I was going through, thankfully. Probably made some embarrassing faces, but yeah, you just yell, scream, have some fun and... Yelling and screaming is not my definition of fun. But I guess I if it takes you all the way to screaming. Australia and uh, China... Yeah. You know, that kind of screaming. That's great. I had a smile on my face. Uh, you know what? There's no camera to prove it, so I'm not sure. Well, Chris, this week we are actually talking about something a little bit more serious than just digging holes all the way to China or... How could your, that be possible? Your tree bones. But we have some friends with us today who we are going to send out to dig up some of their own treasure that we buried. He, where, where exactly are they digging? They're digging outside. Can't dig in, in the, here. In the spot where we yeah. buried the treasure? Yes. Yes. Was that remember you were I, supposed to bury that? Yeah. Like so they're okay. Yeah. No, that yeah. that spot. Yeah, no, totally. We they will find treasure that we buried back there. Because we definitely did it. We buried it. And yeah. I remember doing it. And we good did job. It, and they're gonna find that's it. That's good yeah. because that's the only job you had to do. Yeah. So no. I hope you did. I But anyways, who do we have to dig the holes for us today, Chris? Oh, we have Jay and we have Tony. And okay. So um, I feel like it's only fair for us to Choose a team. Oh, we pick a team. He's gonna wow. find the treasure first. Okay. And so, uh, do you want to rock paper scissors for this? Who goes yeah. first? Yeah. Okay. Rock. Oh. oh okay. Man. Clearly. So uh, the I'm gonna go with the overall first overall pick. 
is going to be Jay. I'm going to draft Jay. I think wow. he's going to be the one that okay. finds it. Uh, no offense to dear old Tony, but um, I think it's going to be Jay. He's going to find it. All right. The treasure that's definitely there. Tony, that means you're on my team. Don't let me down. I'm a master hole builder. Digger. Hole digger. So. Uh. Broken spoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, I definitely didn't hide anything. How far did you guys bury this? You're getting close. Oh, you're all sterile. <laughs> <laughs> this is all grass. <laughs> you gotta break through the grass. I break more spoons than grass. All right, so we left, went and got some lunch. Gonna come back and check on the guys, see how they're doing. They're gone. Holes aren't that big. Where did they go? What? Help, help. Help. How'd you get up there? We don't know. Well, that was definitely something. Uh, Chris, you Good had luck. one job to bury a treasure and you didn't do it. So we won't tell them. They definitely dug it. They they were digging it. They they have dug the, they did the Dougie. We did it, buddy. So, um, hey, right now though, we are gonna be talking about something much more important than just our stories of digging and their stories of digging that we just witnessed. And we're gonna be talking about what God has to say about seeking for wisdom, seeking wisdom, seeking the, all the wisdom. Let's dig up some wisdom. Let's do that wisdom. You got it. Dig it. When King David died, his son Solomon became king. Solomon was young, but his father had taught him to listen to God's word. Solomon showed his love for God by obeying God's laws. Solomon wanted to thank God for all that he had done, so he offered a thousand sacrifices to honor God. One night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream and told him that Solomon could ask for anything he wanted and God would give it to him. Solomon asked God for a heart of wisdom. And God was so impressed by his request that he gave Solomon his request and made him the wisest man who would ever live. Solomon's wisdom was put to the test when two women came to see him. They needed his help settling an argument. Each of these women had recently had a baby. One of the babies lived and one had died and now each of the women claimed to be the mother of the living baby. Solomon told his servants to bring him his sword. Then he gave an order. He said, cut the living child in two. Give half to one woman and half to the other. Solomon never intended to hurt the baby. He knew that this was how he could figure out the truth. The real mom would rather the other woman take the baby than let him be hurt. And so Solomon ordered that the baby be given to the real mother. All the people heard about Solomon's decisions and trusted that he would be a good king, even though he was young. God made Solomon so wise that his understanding couldn't even be measured. And so the bottom line is trust God to give you wisdom. Solomon simply asked God for wisdom and God gave it to him. We can trust God the same way. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Yes, because we don't want you to miss out on anything that we have going on coming up on this channel. So again, be sure that you are telling your friends about it. Subscribe to it. Have your parents share it on their social media accounts. I don't know. The sky is the limit. Um, and so you, are you taking a phone call during this? I'm telling my friends all about it. You're telling your friends like all you about it? You should too. 
Wow. What a prop and illustration. Yeah, Mom, can you make sure you watch our episode? (laughs) (laughs) I'm telling all my friends. (laughs) Hey, Mom. (laughs) That was good. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, we will. the cool thing about gravity it just works both ways so that is the cool thing about gravity (laughs) (laughs) okay so um, hold on hold on a second yeah your parents gave you treat bones yeah all the time like when i did something good like when i came inside um and (laughs) 